Ohio gozaimasu everyone, welcome from Japan. In today's video we're going to be giving you guys a little bit of an insight of how our car shopping experience was here in Japan. Seatbelt from the left side. Ohio gozaimasu. If you're just joining us, we're a little American family who've moved from the US to Germany and now to Japan for my work. Could not be more excited to start our life here in Adventures, but with that there's a lot of news and that includes vehicle shopping or car shopping. So we're going to give you guys a little bit of insight in this video of how our car shopping experience has been, tell you how incredibly surprised we are and how well maintained the vehicles are here, and how cheap, yes, how cheap all of the vehicles have been. Today we are going car shopping. We've been looking online for a lot of vans. I never saw as, as minivan people, but they're actually really affordable here in Japan and almost all of the Americans are driving them. Apparently there's a ton of cars that go in the auctions like every day. And so there's a lot of choices and we can be a little, I guess, particular about what color we want or what year because there's bound to be so many that come through. So um, that's kind of nice. What do you think? The sun is making me sneeze a lot is what I'm thinking. <laughs> but. It's exciting to see some vans and it's more promising that we're going to be able to find one for a lot less that's still in really good condition and lower miles than any other vehicle that we've ever bought which is also nice. These two cars that we just looked at are the Voxy. What is the Voxy? Toyota? I don't know. It's a Voxy and then the other one's a Nissan Serena and I definitely like the Serena. It's nice because it has like a middle seat that you can slide up to the front or in the middle seat and that's kind of convenient and then the very back too can slide up and back which is nice making it so that we have more storage in the back if we need and I scooted the back seats all the way up and the middle seats all the way back it's tighter space but it's nice because then you can maximize your storage and your capacity with people I don't know it's kind of fun <laughs> Do you like this car? been excited because just about an hour ago I dropped off the paperwork to go get our vehicle and you guys we are minivan people now it's gonna be a lot of fun to explore Japan in our new van new meaning still a 14 year old van but a lot of cars here in Japan don't have a lot of miles on them or a lot of kilometers it's kind of an interesting like market to be in because the cars are a lot cheaper in much better condition and a lot less miles, so it's kind of interesting. A few other things to update you on, I got my driver's test, my license done last week. Rissa's gonna be doing hers tomorrow and we will both be ready and legal to drive here in Japan. What's interesting about my position over here, we are on a SOFA agreement, so that means we don't have to pass like what the Japanese locals would have to do for a driving test or a written test. Um, this is a very condensed version, um, but pretty much allows those who have a valid driver's license with experience to be able to enjoy driving privileges here in Japan. Honestly, this one was more of a, you sat down for a few hour course, you had to pass an exam, they had study materials, and um, of course, driving on the opposite side of the road is a learning curve, and so it'll take a little bit there, but I'm really excited and I'm happy to know that a lot of Japanese drivers obey the laws, it's slower speeds, um, it's gonna be hopefully a really smooth transition into driving there. So now you got to see a few of the cars that we looked at and ultimately the one that we decided to go with was the Nissan Serena. Yes guys, we are the proud owners of a minivan. To be quite honest, we never really thought that we would be joining the minivan club, but after looking at the different vehicles and the sizes of what we had here, we were actually quite impressed with this one and we decided to, yeah, take the plunge and go for it. So let's give you guys a quick tour of the van. So for starters, in case you don't know, Japan drives on the left side of the road. So coming from the US and from Germany, we're on right side driving. This is definitely something we knew was gonna be an adjustment, but it wasn't the first time that we've ever driven on the left side of the road. We did a few weeks in New Zealand, but that was five years ago, six years ago. So we'll open up here, take a look. Pretty basic. One thing Rissa and I have both mentioned is that we quite enjoy having a really large windshield and at the same time we have a space up in between the seats here which definitely makes it seem more roomy rather than having just a middle console there. So the turning signals is on the right side compared to what it is in the States 
and then the windshield wipers is on the left side. So yes, there have been a few times where we've tried to turn and we've like flipped up the left side. Windshield wipers are going on a clear sunny day like today. Kind of a little bit of difference. And also what's a really nice feature about this is there are buttons here to open and close the side doors. Um, easily adjust your mirrors, which is pretty standard, and a pretty basic system, like a navigation system. Moving on to the middle section now, honestly, one feature I didn't really care to have was automatic doors, but I will have to say it has been very nice. See what I did there? I do have to say it's been very nice because having the doors opening by themselves, <laughs> it's kind of lazy, I know, but at the same time, it is really nice. Moving on to here, into this next section. Ooh. This is actually quite nice and roomy. These seats as well, they move forward and back, which is really nice. You got the car seats right here. This middle seat right here is actually really, really nice because right now it sits in the middle between these two seats. It goes actually like this and slides all the way up to the front middle section so you could have three in the front and then these could be like pilot seats. I think that's the term for them. You can even pull it from the back too. It goes all the way up. You got the driver's seats up there and you got a space right here that you can walk in and out of, especially if you have people in the third row. So let's take it to the back. Have the seats folded up on the sides. So it's really nice. It has a hook attachment that goes up on the side and the legs, they fold in and out for space storage and they're able to hook in nicely to the anchors below into the floor. And not only that, they actually move forward and backwards as well, which allows you to have a little bit more flexibility for how the seats are and how much space you have between them. It's quite versatile, and I like how the seats fold up on the sides because it allows us to have storage here underneath. Having every single seat sliding, them able to fold up on the side here and extra storage was one of the major reasons why we decided to get it. We definitely could have gone with a bigger van and honestly we thought about it at first but then after looking at this one and realizing how small some of the areas for parking and how small a lot of the streets are going to be we're glad we didn't go any bigger although you could. We're gonna be using this for more of like our bigger trips maybe when we go camping longer distances and especially when we have family and friends visiting so it was nice for us to be able to have this to know that we can fit a few more people with us still be able to go and travel to places that we won't on train. We're definitely going to be getting a second vehicle that's more compact for more of our day-to-day -day and smaller short trips because it is going to be smaller and easier to drive around. We definitely have this little sticker here which means that you have been driving for less than one year in Japan whether that means you're a new driver or you're like us and you're new to the country. This is just a magnet so it's nice you can just move it any way you want. A lot of Americans drive this and I think it's notably so because it's a minivan it's got a lot of space, and Americans, we love our space. Am I right? Quite honestly, it is a nice and cheap vehicle for what you're getting. One thing we definitely have to talk on is the price for these vehicles over here in Japan. Now, this is a 2010 Nissan Serena, and it has 140,000 kilometers, so do your math for everyone who likes miles. I want you guys to guess how much this vehicle costs. I thought it'd be really fun to have all of you guys put a guess in and how much we spent on this van. 2010 Nissan Serena, 140,000 kilometers. It had like brand new inspections and everything done right before we purchased it from a used dealer. Pretty much everything looks in really good condition. So put your comments down below and then later on in the video we'll share you what we actually paid for and you can tell us whether you think we got a good deal or not. To give you more of an idea of some of the vehicle prices here in Japan, there was a brand new camper van that we saw, uh, a pretty small one, so it's probably two people but we saw it out there and it was roughly 15,000 US dollar. That really surprised us because I think that came with like all the sleeping and the eating arrangements. There might have been some add-ons like for what kind of stove and what kind of things you wanted to put in there, but honestly, we were quite surprised. My question is this still, why do all the vehicles have such low mileage still? It doesn't make sense. For example, I saw a 2012 Nissan Note that had like 23,000 miles on it. And I have no idea how a car has that few miles. I don't know. You answered to me. Maybe it's just because people didn't really drive it besides just to work and then they took public transportation everywhere. But it blew my mind that a car could be 12 years old and have only 2,000 miles per year on it. It was just kind of crazy to me. Let's get out of here and we'll show you what Japanese roads look like. But don't worry, this is not the first time that we've been driving. We have had a little bit of practice. Get our GPS going here. Try not to pull for my seatbelt on the left hand side here. Yeah, one time I was sitting in the back by Noah and, and Willa and all of a sudden I see Tanner's hand just going like this. 
and then I realized who's reaching for the other seatbelt and he finally realized and we had a good chuckle about that. So of course, prior to getting our car and driving it, we had to get a driver's license. And here on base, they actually provide us with like a three day course. It's mandatory that everyone takes this and they cover like the cultural differences, the language, et cetera, et cetera. Like there's a lot of information covered with information that's pertinent to on base and then just living here in Japan. Hello or good afternoon. Konnichiwa. Good evening. Konbanwa. Goodbye. Sayonara. Thank you. Arigato gozaimasu with that is learning how to drive and the safety rules and regulations here. Right after the class, actually, we took like a 30 minute test, like 50 questions, and we had to get 80% or above. We both passed the first time. Woohoo! <laughs> Most of the people were passing, honestly. Start the ignition, baby. Listen to the purr. And seatbelt from the left side. Over. To the right. Let's go. Every car we've gotten to has like this GPS system of sorts. We have a backup camera, hold it. Yes, except for it like aims right at the ground, so there's no sense of like even using it to see how far away from things you are, besides like the curb. We just left base and came to a stop and that is one major difference between driving here in Germany versus Japan. There's a lot of stop signs and you have to come to a complete stop. Not gonna lie, I kinda miss those yield signs. They're definitely nice. And there's not very many roundabouts here and there was a lot in Germany. This is gonna be our furthest excursion today to Ikea. So maybe we'll see more. Okay, so let's hit him with it. What are some of the main things from the driving test, Tanner, that you remember? I mean, obviously there's, you know, characters in Japanese and they won't always be in English. So you have to know what the stop sign looks like, the characters that are there for it. That's upside down thing. triangle the with a looking triangle. H. It's just the yield, it's just the yield <laughs> sign. us that we need an ETC reader because we're about to go under a toll and the ETC card here makes it so it's cheaper so it's really nice because tolls definitely add up we have a place to put the card we just don't have the card yet these are this these are visa hi what's going on yes thank you for yep that was 750 yen. We are in Yokohama now. Um, we took the first toll road just probably five minutes outside of Yokosuka. So that was our first time on the expressway. The speeds on this road is, now it's testing me, 100. This one technically is 80, but a lot of the major expressways are, the maximum is gonna be 100 kilometers an hour. So it definitely is a lot slower driving than we're used to in Germany because non, Autobahn roads in general, if they weren't like posted with anything, they were like 100 kilometers. So they were like the fastest that you can go in Japan. Even on our base, it's like 40 kilometers, and then off of base is what, 60? Uh, mostly 40. But mostly, yeah, 60. yeah. 
40 to 60 so we are driving much slower here and then the other thing that really stood out to me when we learned about the driving stuff is that cars can pass each other in one lane on like smaller roads and I just thought that was crazy that it is allowed to pass without you know a marker or anything everywhere that we've lived it's you're not legally allowed to do that and you know here it's considered more normal I guess I'll have to be extra alert on my right hand side to see if someone's gonna pass if I'm going slow enough I don't know we'll see we already talked about stopping but one thing we wanted to mention was just stopping at railroad tracks it's like mandatory they're actually quite frequent that's why public transportation is so great and amazing here in Japan is because everything's so connected and they're very timely but with that there's a lot of train tracks I found and we haven't even got out there that much but I just feel like we've spent a lot of time like waiting for the trains to come that's definitely a con to being in a car rather than on the train that it's waiting for we're headed to Yokohama, if that wasn't mentioned. This is a city that is south of Tokyo and it's a very large city. And it has amazing views from the bay and it's known for like its waterfront as well as like their fireworks show. Back on New Year's Eve, they had a really big fireworks show. We thought about going, instead we did something really cool. We'll actually have to put some of the footage here for you guys to see what we did for New Year's Eve. Um, we went to a Buddhist temple and a shrine and we got to see some really cool lights there and that was just a really amazing experience to be able to to see what a lot of Japanese people do for New Year's Eve, where they go and how they're you know celebrating the new year with different religions. cool experience for us and one that we'll definitely remember. Yet another tunnel. There are a lot of them here where we live. It's so mountainous and hilly that we're always going under a tunnel it seems. They're fairly short though. I'm not gonna lie, it feels kind of weird to be in the van club now. I never ever saw myself as having a minivan um, and I don't think that it's something we'll continue when we go back to the States. However, it's gonna be fun to experience it and I've gotta say, because parking spots are smaller here, it's nice to have sliding doors, especially with babies where I'm already carrying like a car seat um, and that's tight enough that I don't have to worry about the car door swinging open and you know, not having enough space to fit in the car seat. So it is a big perk. Man, we really gotta get that ETC card. Also, it is super nice how much space this place has. We can keep our strollers open and just lift them up and slide them in and shut the door. So although it's not hard to like break it down, because there's room, we don't have to. So maybe we'll become more lazy with that. <laughs> I don't know, but it is a nice little perk. Um, and there's plenty of space. We can fit like two strollers and some groceries in here and just have a lot of room. Dang, these things are all over. <laughs> I know, it's already gonna be an expensive <laughs> trip just to come here. We're already over like a thousand yen already this morning. Let's see how much this one is. Another 130, another dollar down the drain. Although I will say, maybe that contributes to how cheap the cars are here, is because if you're gonna have a car and ride on the toll roads, they already know it's gonna be expensive, so maybe they don't want to double penalize. Where am I going? <laughs> <laughs> That's the hard part here. Getting used to how many turns and roads and ramps like this is spaghetti bowl right here it's kind of cool but So driving on the left side of the road, some of the things I've definitely done are turned the windshield wipers on because I thought I was turning. It's on the opposite side. That's a major one. And then I feel like I forget that I'm driving on the left side of the road most when I'm backing up from like being parked. Sometimes I've been in the right side and I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to like move over. It's easier when you see people in front of you driving on the left lane. But when there's no one around, that is when it gets you. Well, we're finishing out this evening quite full. Honestly, quite full. <laughs> and yes, I'll be able to see 
hopefully, the whole way home. We literally have spent the entire day here, and wow. I forget how much, how much time it takes to do this. Riss, you told me we weren't prepared enough to come here. Uh, but yeah, we literally have spent here since 10 o'clock this morning, and it's now 8 o'clock. So it has been a full day here at IKEA. So much that we've had, not lunch, but lunch and dinner. But to say the least, we're happy that we have the van because we had to pick up a bed for us, and we had to pick up another like cabinet for our kitchen storage area. And um, of course, when you go through IKEA, you see things that you're just like, oh yeah, we needed to get this, we needed to get that. And before you know it, you have a van full of stuff. We're gonna be driving the rest of the way home tonight in the dark, but it all fits. We're all gonna be able to sit in there safely and make our way home now. And I don't know about you, but I'm pretty impressed that I was able to fit every single piece. Okay, all but one piece on one of these trolleys. One thing we didn't really think about when we went to Ikea was, well, we didn't have a 100% game plan of everything we wanted. But the second part is, now we have to store everything because we can't move into our house for a little bit. So, don't know what we were thinking. Being too proactive sometimes is a bad thing. All right, now to share with you guys how much we spent on our van. The total cost that we bought this from a used car dealership Eight-seater 2010 Nissan Serena with 140,000 miles was 2,600 US dollars. Yeah, 2,600 US dollars. And I say it like that because in my mind, if we were to look at this in the States, I would think it would be easily $10,000 um, for a van with this low of mileage and in this grade of condition. I would say at least, if not more. So we felt like it was a really good deal. Of course, we did see a few vans posted on just like the used car lots over here by private users, but I also didn't know a lot of the information about that. But are you guys as surprised as we are? I mean, that was just something that we were really surprised to find out and uh, quite happy. Of course, that does include having that two-year Japanese compulsory insurance done, the inspection, and also on top of that, we had a new alternator or be it a rebuilt new alternator. Uh, a new pulley belt and a few other odd and end things fixed on us when it went through the intense inspection. So we're pretty happy having the vehicle now, being able to get around. I'm really excited to see everyone's reactions about that, uh, to see how close people were. And if anyone guessed 2,600 on the dot and we hadn't already told you, then kudos to you because I would have never guessed. Thank you so much for joining today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. We're gonna love exploring Japan in our car and on public transportation. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to keep following us along here in Japan. And as always, don't forget to check out our Patreon page if you haven't already. 